Hi friends, thank you so much for being here with us today. We are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hi you beautiful people all over the world. We are watching you check in and it's so nice to see our BFFs here. Thank you for joining us today. Today we are going to explore different types of fabric to needle felt onto. I brought a collection of fabrics and a collection of samples and I have some of them on display right behind me here. Some of them we made and some of them were made by our friends and I hope that today helps unlock for you what fabrics to choose for what type of project you're needle felting and we're going to dig right into the meat of that. Before we do, let me say hi to a few people. Thank you for checking in. There's a chat window if you're logged into YouTube. It should be over there and people are saying hi and where they're from. I hope you will too. If you're watching the playback, you can participate down below. And I want to say hi to Bev in Georgia and Karen. I see you in Ohio. Thank you so much for being here. There's Christina all the way in Poland. Ever here, girl. You're always here with us. Thank you so much. And Laurel's in Chicago. Chris is staying up very, very late in Australia or early something. Anyway, thank you for being here and hanging out with us. We have Audrey in the UK and Tammy in Kentucky. Thank you all so much for being here and everyone else. Thank you for joining us. So this is our live show. It is an interactive time together. You'll have time to contribute to the conversation, maybe offer your own tips, ask your questions, although a lot of you sent us questions in our Facebook group last night and I appreciate that. Um, so for those of you who don't know, here's where we hang out all week. And um, if we, if you have a question today, post it in the chat. If we don't get to your question, you can post it down below. So it's participatory during and after the show. And hey, everybody who participates during and after get entered to win prizes. So the first thing I want to do is give away two prizes from last week. And these are people who chatted in the box and left comments. Maybe you told us what was your favorite takeaway or anything um, from last week where we needle felted these little uh, 3D barn owl ornaments. And we did have a kit for that. So congratulations to Carolyn Sittler and Karen Whaley. You both win a needle felting a barn owl kit and we are going to send that out to you. So for everyone, if you re just remember if your question don't get answered on the live show post them down below it's another chance to win a prize so before we jump into today's chat the fairies have some stuff that they brought that they want to share with you and the first up is the very magical fairy Hannah <laughs> Yay! hey everybody how are y'all doing today fairy Hannah here so I'm showing y'all this is a new color but it is a fabric you might remember from the furry 2D Rabbit a tutorial we did a while back, but it's our linen fabric. This is one of our new colors. This is going to be a, a barn red. We also have a really fun pumpkin orange that I do see over here on the side, so Marie's going to show that to y'all later, and a really nice dark forest green. So these are available by the yard. We do have a half cut, and we also have what we call a picture book cut, which is 12 inches by 14 inches. So new fun colors, a fun fabric, great for any needle felted background. And next up, I got Miss Fairy Becca for y'all. Thanks. Bye. Yay. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> Hi guys, Fairy Becca here. So today I wanted to show you our Rustic Cabin Felt Sheet Bundle. So Marie's going to show you a bunch of awesome things to needle felt onto today. But I wanted to show you my personal favorite, which is our felt sheets. I just think they come in a great size, a great variety of colors, and I'm just really comfortable using them because you can make it any size project you want. And so with the Rustic Cabin felt sheets, I have it unrolled for you. So our felt sheets come in an 8 inch by 12 inch cut. They are 100% wool, so they're the real deal. And as you'll see, it's only about one millimeter thick. Um, so it's a little thin, but it is definitely very dense, very sturdy. So it will hold any needle felted project really well. I wanted to show you the colors real quick. Real quick. We have deep red, cocoa, Bordeaux, Dijon, leaf, and marina. So um, our rustic cabin is a great fall color palette. And I just think that this will be sure to cure your cabin fever. 
Alright. <laughs> Up next is Fairy Holly. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, so I love felting on the felt sheets, but if you want to go bigger, we have felt yardage. So this is also one millimeter. It's 100% wool. It comes in about 10 different colors. You can easily find it on our website under, what is it, wool felt? <laughs> so um, we sell it in quarter yard, which is 18 inches by 36 inches, half yard, which is 36 by 36, or a full yard is 36 by 72. But of course, if you want something special, just give us a call or an email and we will help you out. And um, yeah, that's it. Here's Fairy Ann. <laughs> Hi friends, thank you for being here with us today. I wanted to share a 2D needle felting project that we are currently loving right now. This is the Stacked Coffee Cups project. It was designed by a fiber artist in New York named Barb Sackle. She's originally a uh, quilt maker and designer and so she takes a really unique approach to her 2D needle felted paintings and we have another one called the Quilt Square project. Uh, this one again is the Stacked Coffee Cups. They are both available under the Learn section of our website. Definitely check these out. So for to make this project we recommend the Beach Party Stu MC1 Studio Pack some MC1 dark chocolate, the one ounce increment would be great, and a felt sheet. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. <laughs> I hope you have lots of fun today. Next up is Fairy Kayla. Yay! Hi everybody, Fairy Kayla here. I'm just showing off one of our really fun fall projects that if you remember from last year, this, this may look a little deja vu e with me and Boo Kitty here. So this kit is awesome. It's so fun. It is another 2D uh, work of art you can make. <laughs> it comes with all of the colors that you'll need, a little goodie bag, and it also comes with a little jute bag that you can needle felt on too. So this is actually the finished product right here. Little Boo Kitty. <laughs> it's great for little Halloween trick-or-treat bags. The only thing that the kit doesn't come with is needles and foam. I would recommend for this project a 10 by 7 foam that fits nicely inside the jute bag as well as a variety pack of needles. I like to start out with the general sculpting and then switch to the, the finer needle, which is the 4D triangle, <laughs> just for the finer details. Yeah, there's a little boo kitty right there. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got one more question for you. Why did the Scarecrow win an award? Why did the Scarecrow <laughs> win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> <laughs> I've been holding on to that one all day. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll turn it back over to Miss Marie. <laughs> Thank you, Kayla. Can I just see a round of hearts for all the fairies? Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is our crew. These are the gals who answer the phone. They answer your emails and your customer service questions. They are the ones who pack your boxes with love and loving care. And they are also the ones who um, will make all the products that you see in the shop. And that Boo Kitty was actually designed by Kayla, the gal who showed it to you. So she and I did a video tutorial together and taught her project. And we're gonna have more fairy designed projects this year, I'm really excited to say. And I look forward to bringing those to you with the fairies. So thank you all so much for being here. We are going to jump in today's talk to today's topic, which is choosing a fabric for needle felting onto is a pretty common question that we get and over the years I think we've really tried to get better and more conscientious about how we answer that question but it's one of those really wide open questions and there's so many different ways to approach it either just from the project standpoint or the fabric standpoint and we're going to start today with the project standpoint for consideration. So I will tell you that after the show, um, you can download under the description is just a little printout, which is kind of Marie's, you know, off the top of my head, discussing a few different fabrics. It's not comprehensive uh, for needle felting. It's not comprehensive. It's not every fabric you could possibly needle felt onto, but I hope it's thought provoking and gives you something to think about. And that'll be under the description, there'll be a link to the 
landing page on our website and you can grab the PDF from there after the show. So we're going to start with this idea of needle felting onto fabric. Sometimes when people call us, they just want to know what's a good base for a needle felting picture. And we've realized that a needle felting picture can mean a whole bunch of things. So just as an example, uh, in the background here, I have some pictures with very simple subjects on them, and these are needle felted onto wool, but they are intended to be framed, matted, framed, framed under glass. This is a wall hanging, and if someone says us that they want to needle felt a wall hanging, we often think of something that hangs as standalone. But that might be a picture that is a wall hanging that's to go behind glass, or that might be mounted onto a piece of canvas. But you might be needle felting a picture onto a purse or something that you want to be a purse. Some people want to needle felt onto jeans or a greeting card. There are so many variables, so we're going to look at some of the characteristics of fabric that you might consider, and then we'll even talk about maybe what are some of the nuances of that fabric that may need adjustment in order to better support your project. Cool? Cool. Okay. I want to look at just a, a couple of the things uh, back here. I'm going to grab this, this piece. We needle felted this um, together last year. This is, we call it um, needle felting our pumpkin spice linens. So this is a project as well as Kayla's project. But just so I, I tell you once while I'm my, I have an opportunity to look at the back, this uh, little robin is a project. So we're going to talk about the robin and the fabric and things you might think about uh, for functional items. Um, this is more of the pumpkin spice table linens project and um, Boo Kitty is a project and then we did a whole bunch of needle felting pictures together this year and we created a, a standalone playlist just this week so maybe you haven't seen it before but this is an example of uh, one of the pictures that we did together in the playlist so there's lots of things to explore under this idea of needle felting onto a fabric or onto some kind of base fabric. And we do have a playlist that if we don't get to it today, you can get see a variety of things under that topic. Okay, cool. Let's sit down, hang out together. All right. Are we good, Anne? We are good. Okay, thanks for being here, everybody. All right, I brought a few different types of fabric and I posted those some of those online. And thank you to folks who posted questions on our Facebook page. Uh, to bring in this, bring some, I guess, depth to this topic so we can cover it together. And what I'd like to do probably is, in the beginning, we'll knock out a few of the fabrics that maybe um, need a little more care and consideration. I don't know if there's any that per se, but let's talk about the fabrics that you're choosing or the projects that, that you're making. <clears throat> We're going to start as a team getting better about asking you, when you tell us that you want a needle felt onto a fabric or needle felt a picture, we're going to ask you, what's the function of that item? Is that item purely decorative? Like one of the pictures on the wall behind me, is it just gonna hang or sit on a shelf, be mounted and not really have any activity? Is it going to be a functional item? something that's going to get some use, some handling, some wear and tear, or is it going to be a wearable? I didn't bring in the denim jacket, but is it going to be a wearable? And that wearable might be um, a jacket, it might be a pair of jeans, it might be a hat, which could potentially get less wear and tear than something like a jacket or a pair of jeans. Um, and purses are kind of right in the middle, so it's functional, but if you wear it every day, I would almost call it a wearable. And when I think about that, Decorative, decorative to functional to wearable, I'm thinking about the um, durability that the piece needs and the likelihood of it needing to be washed. So these are the, some, of the, some of the things that we need to think about when you're trying to choose a fabric. What's it going to do? And then also, sometimes you're making a piece <clears throat> like this, this is just needle felted onto linen, but I wanted to sew it into another project and there may be certain treatments that you want to give it. I wouldn't want to needle felt onto linen and then just hang it on a wall. Um, it's not going to have much body by itself. So we try and think about how it's going to be used. Um, thinner fabrics versus thicker fabrics have some considerations. So these are some of the things I've started to think about about these fabrics. Is it thin or is it thick? Um, does it have loft 
or is it very compressed? Does it have stretch or does it have no give at all? I even think of surface tension. Does it have a lot of surface tension like a heavy canvas or does it have no surface tension like a cheesecloth? And someone just asked us about needle felting onto cheesecloth. So let's look at a few of the, of the pieces I've brought and please contribute to the conversation. I'm gonna start with um, pre-felts that you might not, that uh, maybe you wouldn't normally put them in your mind under fabrics, but they absolutely are a fabric in the pre-felt stage. And let's talk about those and we'll knock some of these out of the way right away. So I'm going to let's see what I can move. Let's look at pre-felt. This is our PFX pre-felt. PFX, we've shared it with you a number of times. When I talk about a fabric and I say, does it have loft? PFX is a great example of a fabric that has loft. And another way of thinking about loft is, does it have a squishiness factor? <laughs> can you squishy it down to something smaller than it already is? If you can, if it has a squishy factor, if you're doing something that's highly detailed, then there's a chance that you're going to lose surface area as you needle felt this and try and apply those details. And I would like to show you an example of this so we can just clarify what we think PFX is best for. So I'm gonna bring in a couple of pieces that were made on fabric that it made in the same way as the PFX and that includes the, the wall hanging behind me. This gorgeous piece right here was made by one of our BFFs, Sandy Atkins, who lives over there on the East Coast. And this hangs in my home. It's definitely a treasure. And much like our PFX, this fabric was made on a needle punch loom, which if they call it a loom. There's nothing loomy really about it other than the name. And that is that the fabric is like a thick needle felt that is not as condensed or as felted as commercial felt. So it is a felt background, but it still has stretch. It still has give. And if a fabric still has give and stretch, what you can expect, especially if it's a feltable fabric, like a pre-felt or a partially felted fabric, is that as you add density and as you needle felt into it, it's going to shift, it's going to change shape, and it's going to shrink to some degree. So expect, if you're going to needle felt onto something like this that's partially felted, whether you partially wet felted it or partially needle felted it, but it's not 100% felted, before you finish your subject or even trim the perimeter, put your subject in and then trim it after. And that way you'll know that you'll have a really short up side. Now this interesting piece um, it's very loosely felted. I'll tell you that the surface is very loosely felted. If I brush my hand across it, I could muss up those fibers. It, not desirable, right? So I don't do that. It, it hangs on the wall. But the subject is built up in like a relief. Uh, you can see that. And that, once she gets the base layer on, allows her to build up the design. So when you have something that doesn't quite have the integrity of a very condensed stiff felt like wool felt building up versus trying to drive in details is definitely an option now another one that i have and i think i'm going to turn the i'll turn the camera overhead just for a second so you can see this I'll, you can see this gorgeous piece up close it's absolutely beautiful and the fibers are loose, that's all part of the design. So again, you can see that it's done, it's done in relief. And this piece is not meant to be durable and it's not meant to be handled. It's just meant to be admired. So it also needs to hang so that the piece is supported. If this piece were six feet long and there was a very dense subject matter going across it, we would expect it to sag in places and kind of warp. Pieces like this that hang loose are already gonna warp a little bit as they hang, as they absorb moisture. But I think you can see if you look at this piece, and now I don't mind, I don't really think of these as flaws. This is just the natural character of it, but it's something to think about, especially if you're gonna be framing. But can you see how it kind of bows in here and out here? And it has to do with 
one, it's being put on this little bar here. Maybe the bar was too small, but some of it is just a little more dense than other parts. And that's what you can expect, is the shaping to change a little bit. So if that is important for you, keep this piece bigger than you need it and cut it after you get your subject on. Now this piece was made very similarly, um, a very similar type of fabric. The key difference is the detail <clears throat> and putting these eyes in right there. So this fa fabric had some loft, not a lot of loft, not as much loft as the PFX. So let me show you. PFX, these started out of the same thickness. This is the PFX, PFX thickness, and then this is that basically the same amount of material punched down into a flat fabric. Even with this much loft, this little bit of loft, what happened when you go to do something like the eyes is <clears throat> when you draw in your lines, if you're trying to get something really detailed, usually what we do is we put lines down. We might do an ink transfer with an iron-on transfer pen. We might do um, a sketch with your pen to get your details on before you make this picture. And then we start to needle felt. And I needle felted these eyes first. I always just start with the eyes. And what happened is, I'm gonna, I just have brought a little circle here for, to, to demonstrate. What happened is, <clears throat> as you start to add detail, you've got the outer eye and you've got the inner eye. And even if I'm not putting anything in it, as I poke this outer eye, the inner eye gets smaller and that hole gets smaller, that circle gets smaller and smaller. So the area that I was gonna put the detail in now just went from you know that size to that size and getting that same amount of detail in is not the same. So when you want to do a very detailed picture, I think it's important to think about how that landscape is gonna shift and you'll have an easier time if your fabric, your base fabric, doesn't have too much loft. Something like this little picture, which I just made this for personal use, so I'm just sharing it for personal use. This was a photograph by a, a, a photographer I don't know, and it's just a picture that I tried to do when I was learning how to do something realistic. The subject is a little more loose a little bigger, a little less detailed. And yeah, getting down here in the eye parts, I started to lose some of that real estate. But overall, the subject matter is bigger and a little less concentrated than something like the details on this face where you're going to put a lot of wool in a very small area to get the sharpness that you're going for. So part of us asking you about the project, not just is it decorative, is it functional, is it wearable, is how detailed is it going to be? How, and, and so part of that question is, for us, is how much are you going to be compacting that substrate that you're going to put the fiber on? And that is what we're talking about. So when we think of loft, think of squishability. If you're not going super duper detailed, then the squishability is just fine. Now these are... Mm, these are not really pre-felts, they're partially felted though. They could be felted more, these backgrounds and the, that wall hanging, they absolutely could be felted more. But for the purpose of just a wall hanging, um, framing behind a mat or a glass, it's actually okay because they won't really be touched. So that is the, the PFX, it has loft. But let's look at the other pre-felts, and I understand we're going to get the PFL, uh, the PFL on the, the website next week. But I want to look at these pre-felts together so you can consider their characteristics as well. Before I, I jump to that, is there anything I should answer? No, we're doing good. Okay, so let's look at pre-felt because sometimes people will ask us, can I needle felt onto pre-felt? And the answer is yes. But again, what's going to be the function of the piece or what's your overall vision for that picture? If you wanted to do something like any of the things I just shared with you on the pre-felt that we carry, I might try and talk you out of it and I want to show you why. This is our 
PFM pre-felt, it's very, it, it does have loft to it, it's delicate, and it has a lot of stretch. This is not an elastic type stretch that springs back. This is a stretch that you could warp and misshape in with your hands. And if you can do that, I promise you that as you needle felt and you put stress on this material, it's going to misshape. This is our PFL pre-felt. More dense than this, meaning more compressed than this, um, they weigh similarly. I think this one weighs a little bit more, we found, and this one weighs a little bit less. So this has a little less material per square inch, but it's less lofty. It's more flat. And this might be, uh, these might be a good background for a great big picture that you want to completely needle felt, but not for single subjects so much. And let me show you why. This is an example. These pieces were the exact same size. And all I did were needle felt these little tree silhouettes on it. One, it's hard for the wool to kind of grab onto this stuff because it's loose and thin. But what you see is that this fabric is getting warped and misshapen, um, curling up under the stress of getting this added and it's starting to bow. So when we say that these may not be good for a wall hanging, we mean, well, if you're needle felting a wall hanging 100% and um, you need something to add integrity, this may not be our first choice, but if you're gonna fill in the whole background, just get this bigger than you need because what you can expect is as you add detail, this fabric is gonna continue to distort and shrink. So you would need way more than your subject area and room for it to come in and come bind with the fibers that you're putting. But I would only recommend this if you're going to needle felt to wet felt or cover the whole thing and you just are looking for a quick layer. We do think our PFX is a better choice because um, if you're gonna needle felt the whole thing because it's gonna have more beef to it in the end. It's gonna have more thickness. Now this is the PFL. It didn't dist distort um, quite as much um, as this one, but, and I, <laughs> just my goofy little, <laughs> I just wanted something kind of entertaining for me. Um, but you can see that it starts to buckle in and this, this, the thing to remember about pre-felt is that it doesn't have integrity on its own, so it can easily warp. It's really designed to be fully felted. So if you're going to wet felt something, ultimately a pre-felt is a great quick base layer to get in there, but if you're doing single subject needle felting, this is not going to have enough integrity to be mounted, to hang. It's just going to not want to behave completely like using a felt fabric wood or even a linen fabric. So I know this might contradict maybe even what some of you do and I'm open to your, your feedback and your input, but I wanna say sort of for the record, in my world, if you're using pre-felt as a base to needle felt on, I would imagine that it goes behind the fullness, or the, it's completely covered with the subject. I would say that pre-felt ideally would be completely covered with the subject or it's going to be wet felted and you want that needle felting to integrate into the background of that, of that pre-felt. And I'm interested to see if anyone else has something different to say or a question on that topic. Yes, Anne's nodding. Alrighty, Teresa asks, for the yellow pre-felt, mm -hmm. could you use a double layer and then needle felt onto that to hold it together to give it added, would that give it added strength? So Teresa wants to know is, can you basically needle felt this more and can you make it thicker? And in my experience, to get the thickness that you're wanting, it's more easily achieved and more satisfactorily achieved by wet felting something like this. I've needle felted things, so you'll needle felt through it, but this is actually very, very delicate. And I think you're gonna find that a lot like that wall hanging is that unless you needle felt it from both sides, you're always gonna have a bit of looseness in that fabric. 
it's a little bit challenging to really get it all to bind really, really well with needle felting on this, the way it's so, it's so delicate. Your needles just wanna go right through it. You definitely could do double layers, but I think it's a lot more work to needle felt the whole thing like this than to wet felt it. And you could use your fine needles, but what I would still say that you need to make it bigger than the ultimate piece that you want because it's going to distort, it's going to shrink, it's going to go in on itself. Now this fabric or pre-felt is a 19.5 micron. It's very, very fine. I would, rather than use something this fine, can just sort of encourage you to try like our MC1 batting because you can pull off a thickness, you're already gonna get that thickness, and because of its crimpy nature, it felt so readily that you could needle felt it into a fabric probably more easily than you could this pre-felt. That's my, I, I mean, you and you can cut it into a square if you want, but um, I just feel like you'll get a better finish on something that needle felts a little more readily. And mostly it's that this is so fine, and I'm going to let you look at it right here so you can see it. The needles, you know, the needles will poke through it um, and leave kind of holes, but you definitely could needle felt the two together and start to form a fabric. It's just going to require a lot of working on your part and probably working on both sides to get it to bind both ways. And um, when you do needle felt something from both sides, like, um, Anne, can I, can I see your hat? You're going to have yeah. to, so Anne's been taking names in the hat. Go ahead, I'm going to take this hat. So this hat right here is needle, is, was a needle felted fabric that was finished with wet felting. And you basically needle felt it on foam. You peel it off, turn it inside out, needle felt it. Peel it off, turn it inside out, needle felt it. Again, again, like five or six times. And what you'll notice when you go through that process of needle felting, peel off the foam, needle felting, obviously more than this, peel off the foam, is that the underneath side starts to look more smooth because the fabric is coming together, it's starting to bind, and your needles now are really just bouncing off the foam and not plunging as far into the foam maybe as your first rotations. So each time you peel it off, it looks a little more smooth on this side than the ones the needles last touched. So if you think you wanna use the pre-felt as a base, that would be my suggestion, is cut more than you need. Needle felt it fully as much as you need it needle felted to then receive your designs. That would be my suggestion. And needle felt it by, you'd have to needle felt it by needle felting it methodically across the entire surface, peel it off, needle felt it methodically across the, the entire surface. But almost anything, when we try and build up that, that density um, with the needle felting, is gonna have more lock to it than something that was wet felted. That's just the nature of it. You can get those fibers closer together with wet felting. Show can. But so why don't we, uh, if we jump off the pre felts, let's look at some things that have been needle felted onto handmade felt that was wet felted. And um, I had brought in a few of those. These are, these are wet felted. I just brought in a couple actually. <clears throat> That's perfect. Do I have, I'm looking around to see, do I have anything else? I thought I brought the owl in. So I have a, a, just a couple of little simple fun little pieces here. These were wet felted. Now this one I want to say um, that we needle felted it and then we wet felted. So this was from a video a couple of years ago. This is MC1 batting and we showed how to basically prep a base fabric by needle felting these colors together in a little bit of a transition and then we wet felted it to give it more body and then we needle felt it on top of it and did some top stitching. So it's just a playful little picture, but we made a custom colored canvas first by needle felting for people who feel maybe a little bit intimidated and then by wet felting that piece and then the subject was put on top after. This piece 
It's called the Cluster Houses, and we did this also in a, um, in a video with all of you, so it's on our YouTube channel somewhere. We should probably rename it and, and give its page. This is called the Cluster Houses, and we just love seeing what everybody made in the Cluster Houses tutorial. It wasn't a pattern. It was just a technique, and then everybody went off and did their own thing, which is so fun. And what you see right here is we put down a layer of our PFX. So we put down the PFX first, and then we blended the purple and the green and the blue to create a canvas. We wet felted that canvas. And then on the next show, we needle felted the designs on top. So once it was dry. Again, this is not overly detailed, but it has a lot of body to it and it has a lot of color and it's a complete, the subject is complete. The subject covers the entire, well this being the, the color layer, covers the entire pre-felt that we used. None of the pre-felt was exposed. It was designed to just be a support layer and you can see by all of these lines of the picture underneath how much that was needed to kind of hold on to all of that fiber that we were pushing through. So handmade felt is a great option for a base fabric for needle felting onto and the more detailed that image is going to be, like the dog portrait that we shared, I encourage you to make the felt more dense. And now sometimes we're needle felting and then we wet felt the project and then we needle felt the more, needle felt more and then we wet felt more like our friend Kimberly Pulley, who I've shared some of her amazing paintings um, as well. And she does a multi-step process. So that's also an option but handmade felt is definitely an option. You just have to know that you've made good felt. We have a pancake lesson that we call it on YouTube. We're going to be putting up an introduction, basically like wet felting fundamentals in our school, which is coming online, should be next month. Um, so if you're new to wet felting and you feel a little intimidated, just check it out. You can do something really simple and you know just have fun with that. Okay, I'm gonna jump to wool felt, commercial wool felt, but before I do, do we have any questions? Anything? Yeah. Just going back to the pre felt real quick, Susie wants to confirm. So, pre felts are, are best when you're planning on incorporating wet felting into the process at some point. Susie wants to confirm that pre felts, pre felts would be best when you're planning on incorporating them into something wet felt or they're, they're, they're supporting. Um, it, it may not always be true, like our PFX, you could needle felt the picture on it 100%. It's got enough body and it will needle felt well and will just give you a quick layer. But if you have a very um, delicate pre-felt, whether by needle felting or wet felting, the idea is to felt it all the way. It's a pre-felt, it's not finished. It's like cookie dough, not finished. So, or you know, bread dough rolled out and on the pan, but not finished baked, or half baked, half baked bread, half baked cookie dough, it's not finished. And um, it's going to be more fragile. Maybe you don't mind that, whatever you're doing, but it's going to be fragile until you felt it all the way. Cool, cool, okay. 100% wool felt is one of our favorite fabrics to needle felt on. It's different than what you buy at the craft store, but don't take our word for it. Get the you know, 50 cent or whatever it is stuff from the craft store, totally. And if you're working with kids, if you're working in a school that's low on funds or something, definitely work on that or other fabrics, something that's affordable. But if you're w wanting to do especially pictures or something that you want to sell or something where you're trying to get that really depth of detail into your piece, what you'll love about the wool felt is that it can take it. It can take all of that sort of depth and volume of wool that you need to put into it to get the detail without the fabric shifting. So a couple of things that I brought to share with you are, this is, uh, this is a dog portrait and this is on our YouTube channel. You can watch the whole thing or you can speed through the process. Um, this one is, we show you, we start with one eye and we do it at regular speed and then we do the second eye at a fast speed and um, we'll 
take you through this process for needle felting this dog. This is needle felted onto our 100% wool felt sheet. And then the back has been filled in with our MC1 batting. So this is nothing more than an apricot wool felt sheet, the same one millimeter stuff that you were showed earlier. The difference is I covered all of the back with our MC1. The wool felt sheets can really take that detail without shifting. Notice the notice that it's not bowed. You know, it's still really straight. It hasn't bowed in and gotten misshapen like the, the pre-felt does. It can handle it. Here's another one. You can see it's a rectangle. It pretty much stayed a rectangle. And here's the picture that's on it. Getting in there and doing those details, when you draw your image on that base fabric, it's really going to stay. So wool felt is a great option because it's going to hold its shape and it'll take the wool that you put into it. You can cover the background and not show the wool felt, or you can just sit your subject right on top. This is no problema. We um, made him also, I guess just over a year ago, and then we even cut him out and made some ornaments with him. And this is a little more simple subject picture. <clears throat> um, we've done a couple of these. This is a 3D. This was the, the very first one, wasn't it, Anne? Needle felt cabin in the snow. Anyway, it's under our playlist for um, needle felting pictures. And um, you can see that it's really fun. It's not a lot of detail. It kind of looks like it is, but it's not a lot of detail. And then the other thing about felt is that so many things can be done with it. Here it's just glued on a card. This one we cut out and did back to back and made a hanging ornament. These are thin enough that they can be mounted behind glass, but you can also sew with commercial felt. It's a little thick, um, but you can sew with it, and I've sewn it into um, zipper bags, my, one of my addictions, making zipper bags. Um, and that's what's fun about it too. So you could needle felt it in advance and then sew it into another project, be that functional, um, like a bag or a pillow, and sew it in. So it's one of the really nice things about felt. Um, and you can also, we also, this is just a, um, an adhesive back paper, and on our denim jacket, I didn't bring in, but we ironed it onto the back of a denim jacket. Instead of needle felting on a denim jacket, we made this into an applique and didn't sew it on, but we just basically stuck it <laughs> to the back of our jacket. But you can sew it. That's one of the nice things about felt. So 100% felt, wool felt is going to be good for decorative functional, maybe not wearable items, but you can use it to attach it onto a wearable item. Decorative, functional, wearable. Good, okay. Any questions on that? No, we're doing good, we're okay, all right. So let's look at something, um, we've talked about uh, felt and handmade felt. I'm gonna jump to silks for a second and kind of get those out of the way. We do get asked about needle felting onto silk, and so I wanna look at silk just a little bit with you, and I brought three different um, weights of silk to look at, and just something to consider. So we have a variety of silks here in the shop, and this is a Ponji Shiny or Habitai. You can call it either Ponji or Habitai. This is a silk gauze, so this is five mommy, this is three and a half mommy, very sheer gauze weight and light, and this is our margalon silk. Silks are very delicate fabrics and would have a very high propensity to run when plunged with the felting needle. If you're not sure how a fabric is going to behave, well, pull out your felting needles and poke on them a little bit. I mean, as soon as we poke it, it wants to go into the foam. It doesn't want to hang out by itself. This is the gauze weight. Very likely to rip, run, tear your felt. Here's my finest needle. My finest needle, well, maybe you want ripples, <laughs> you know, for something, but my finest needle will just eat this up. So silks are really not going to be, and now the, the fabric is marred, and it's not going to add anything to your project unless you're trying just to needle felt in some texture. So silk is not gonna be our first choice. And someone asked me about, um, 
they asked me about cheesecloth. And so we brought in the Margolon silk because it's the closest thing I had in-house to cheesecloth. And the thing I want to say about it is cheesecloth, like the Margolon silk, doesn't really have much integrity or strength all on its own. It's very, it's easier to see under this, it's very delicate. And you see the weave is very open and I can kind of pull it apart. So this is very fragile. It's not really gonna add any strength to your project unless you're just wanting to trap it in there or add it for some other reason. But as far as being a base layer or adding any kind of integrity to your projects, then silk is not going to be our recommendation. And some people do want to know if they've needle felted or they've nano felted a scarf and something didn't quite stick. Can they needle felt it to, to get it on? I would encourage you first to try and wet felt that section, but if you're going to needle felt it, consider having wool on both sides. So the fabric side, that maybe one side is fabric only and the other side is your wool design layer. Think about having wool on both sides before you needle felt it so that you have something to go into. So fresh silk overall, the weave can be tight or loose, but overall it's very fragile and very delicate and not really ideal for needle felting onto. Cool, how are we doing? Doing good. Okay, I'm gonna jump to the other end of the, of the spectrum and let's jump to something like burlap, something that is a very open weave. So let's grab Boo Kitty. Adorable project is, is Boot Kitty, and this is needle felted onto burlap. And as Kayla showed you, you get, you know, you get the, the bag with the kit. The thing about when you have a very open weave is sometimes it's a little difficult to get the wool to actually grab on. And what's happening is it wants to push through. It wants to just push through to the other side. Your needles are tiny and they're going to go right through these holes, no problem. You know, the, the needles are going to come out this side without effort. So it really just takes a little bit to kind of build up a base layer underneath. And I want to show you just how much wool compared to the felt sheets that I was just showing you. Look at how much wool is on the back side of this. So this little kitty is not as detailed as something like this picture, this one's easier to see because of the color, but look how much wool is sitting on the back side. So what makes fabrics with a more open weave a bit of a challenge is just that the wool wants to pass through. So when you have something like burlap, um, obviously you want to be working on a piece of foam. Secondly, you want to think about kind of building up a surface layer like a little deck or platform so that the other wool builds upon. Don't, doesn't have to be multi-dimensional, but that's kind of like the blue heron back there is you kind of have a base layer and then you're building that design upon. But something else you can do on something like this is consider putting a felt sheet on that inside or backside so it has something to catch on to, something to grab onto, because that's what the felt wants to do. The wool wants to grab onto something. And what you'll find is that the top or the surface feels very loose until you can get it to kind of build that foundation. So a felt sheet on the back might help if, you're, if your weave is very open. Anything on that? Yes. Okay, Anne says there's something. Kathy asks, could you put a piece of material on the underside of the burlap to help sturdy it? That's kind of what I mean. Can you put a piece of material? So in that case of the material, I would say, Put something that you know is going to grab the wool, something like a piece of felt. You can sort of put that inside. You know, when we do a machine embroidery or sometimes when we do top stitching when we sew, very often we're going to put some kind of a stabilizer underneath. These stabilizers are like a, that we normally buy are non-woven, um, you know, some kind of paper usually. This is an adhesive paper, but some kind of paper usually. And the fiber's not really going to want to bind to that either. But if you put a wool felt sheet under there, then it's going to kind of be a stopping point. It gives the wool something to grab onto versus keep passing through and want to get embedded in your foam. You don't want to get embedded in your foam. The foam should always just be a bouncing off point for your piece. So um, try a felt sheet as an option to grab on to grab onto it. If not that, then try maybe a piece of fabric that you do like needle felting onto, like a linen. 
something that you like needle felting onto already. Cool? And so let's jump to, let's jump over to linen. It's another one of our favorite um, fabrics to needle felt onto. We like to use a medium weight linen. I've also used a heavy weight linen. My other, um, my other pumpkin spice piece behind me right there, that's a, that's a heavier weight linen. And these, these are our these are our new linen colors. These are the the pumpkin, the barn red, and the forest green. Great, great for fall, and they're the same weight as the natural medium linen that we've been carrying. Um, the difference is you'll see more uniformity in the color of the warp than the weft. And our medium weight linen has a different color warp than weft, and that's visible by the little fringe that we've made here. So exactly how to make these linens is on our YouTube channel, and. One of the things about linen, so if we think about the other characteristics we've talked about, it doesn't have any loft, right? It's compressed, the fabric is close together. Um, but what it does have is a semi-open weave, enough that our needle, especially our fine needle, can pass through it and not just leave big gaping marks or create runs like we did in our silk. We can poke at it and that means we can add something like this design on top and it will receive it. A fair amount of the fiber does come through the back because it is such an open weave even if it looks you know kind of close. So expect that to happen and when we make these generally I'm not peeling up the design because I don't I don't want it to what happens is so much wool comes through the backside that if you peel it up while you're working, now you have volume sitting underneath there and the fabric is no longer sitting flat. So if your propensity is to peel it up as you work, you're just gonna have to deal with that difference in level. Part of the material is sitting flat on your foam and part of it is not. We left this in place and we worked with fine needles so that we didn't tear our foam up and then we wet felted the subject. We wet felted this because these particular linens were made to be washed. So this falls into the realm of what we call functional, but we'll, let's call it functional special occasion, functional light use, functional delicate, which means a hand wash. So you can use it for your holiday table, and then if somebody spills mashed potatoes on it, <laughs> you can still hand wash it. So the key is when it's gonna be a functional washable item, wash your fabric first, press it first, then needle felt your design. And if you decide to wet felt it to give it a finish, uh, you can see our little video on doing that, on just hand, just felting that finish to make it all flat. So it does need to be needle felted very flat in order to support that kind of treatment being, being hand washed. Um, didn't I throw one of these in the washing machine? Mm -hmm. I threw it in the washing machine. I didn't just hand wash, so Anne's nodding. So this was actually thrown into the washing machine after it was felted and then just ironed again. So it's not gonna hold up to a lot of that. Like don't put it in with your beach towels and certainly not with your outdoor sold slippers, whatever. You know, wash it with delicates. I don't have a centrifuge, whatever you call it, thingy in my washing machine. So it's a pretty delicate washing machine anyway but these were designed to be washed in the washing machine on a gentle cycle. So it's something to consider and um, just a few things to think about. Now, my friend Robin Barrett, hope you're watching Robin, she texted me a photo last night of a linen she was working with and she said that she was having a difficult time getting the fiber to stick. Well, I did have her send me a picture and it looked like the weave was probably comparable to this or maybe a little more open and my first question was has she washed the fabric remember as soon as you wash the fabric that it's going to cause that weave to come closer together and get a little more tight so that might be your first treatment your second treatment could be if um, the back is not going to be open if it's going to be on something like a pillow she was working on a pillow case then you can consider putting a piece of material across the back and you might like the felt and you might consider putting that felt all the way across the back or um, not it's up to you if you don't then it's going to be raised you know right there where the subject is um, now this isn't felt this is just a cheap cotton i used to buy this cotton at 
I don't know where, like Walmart or wherever I could get it. And I haven't been there for years. They might still have it. Or Hobby Lobby is like a couple of dollars. Um, the weave's not all that great, and the, the fabric has imperfections, but you can still needle felt onto it. I think it's just like a cotton, undyed natural cotton muslin. You can needle felt onto it, too. I find the linen does a little better, and it looks a little better. It just looks a little more sophisticated, but a natural cotton muslin, it's a few dollars a yard, and it could be a great thing to practice on. The difference with this is that the entire uh, back of the this front top of the pillow case has a stabilizer on it and that just gives it a real uniform feel so if you're going to be making something like this consider that fabric stabilizer um, just so that it makes the fabric feel more sturdy and it's going to get less it's just going to get less beat up and then stuff the heck out of it so that it's not going to get dinged but if people sit on it like this is on the couch in my office and the fairies come in and we meet it gets it gets abraded all the time because we just sit on, on our felt pillows so it's going to peel a bit and you'll just have to clean it up like any good sweater you'll have to just peel those little pills off a bit so linen Linen is a really great choice. Experiment with different weights if you like. I would probably encourage to go medium and heavier rather than lighter, just so that you, you know that the fabric has some ability. It's gonna have receptivity to the needle felting. It's also gonna have strength on its own. Um, it's gonna have durability. You can wash it, you can handle it, but because it's an open weave, that needle can pass through it, and that's really a good thing because it means you can needle felt on dense subjects without it puckering. That's the key to that weave. Not so open that it won't receive it, and not so tight that it's going to pucker and leave a big hole. Cool, okay, anything on this? Yes, uh, does the linen need to be washed before you needle felt onto it? Does linen need to be washed before you needle felt onto it? If it's going to be washed ever, like ever, wash it first. If you're going to wrap this around a canvas or uh, mount it behind glass, no. So my little sloth up there will never be washed. He's just going to be hanging around as you would expect a sloth to do. You don't have to pre-wash the fabric, you don't. But I would iron it first, I would steam press it first, like get all your wrinkles out and still give yourself enough room so that your mounting plans work out. Because nothing like not having enough fabric to mount it until you're finished. And I've, I'll, I'm gonna talk a little bit about mounting, but before, just while it's on my mind, we do have a specific video for mounting and hanging your fiber art. And we added it to the needle felting pictures playlist so that you have it there. So on our website, in our shopping cart, you scroll to the bottom, you'll see YouTube videos, and um, click on the 2020 link, and it will take you to all the videos we've done this year. Oh, the mountings was last year, wasn't it? Oh, but on the 2020 page, you'll see the needle felting pictures playlist, and it's in that playlist. It's just a quick way to get to the playlist if you, if you can't find it on YouTube. So the linen only needs to be washed if you're gonna wash it ever. I know, I see I'm getting close to time. Yeah, okay. I know there's a couple of other things. I wanna talk about denim real quick and I wanna talk about canvas real quick. So let me just say before I jump to those two things, any open weave fabrics, some of these are like, this is like a Robert Kaufman, yarn dyed, whatever he calls it, I don't know. But when you're in the fabric store, if you're gonna buy something at the fabric store, get a quilt square, start with the quilt square, try that. And before I jump to those, I talk, did I talk about the quilt squares already? Did I talk about needle felting on cotton? Needle felting on cotton is probably one of my least favorite, like a kind of a quilt square cotton. You might do it, but what I find is that the, the thread is small, the weave is tight and close. The more dense your subject, the more likely the fabric is to want to pucker. So maybe for simple subjects and single subjects, not for a big full coverage, because it just is not gonna have the, the overall, I don't know, ability to receive all that fiber that you want. It's going to pucker and it's going to misshape in a little. So I would encourage that you have always more fabric than you need for that final mounting when it comes to a quilt square. I find that the fiber doesn't wanna to bind to it all that well. It's almost like it's so tight and it requires 
in my world, more needle felting than needle felting onto linen because it's just not that receptive. There's no loft, there's no stretch, the fabric is very compressed, but the weave is so tight and the threads are so, so tight that there's not a lot of movement when you go to push the fiber in. Just know that you're adding matter to matter and there's not a lot of room for those uh, fibers to move. So quilts, Fabrics are one of my least favorite, but not impossible. You can definitely needle felt to them. Expect it to take a little more time to get those surface fibers to really anchor down, at least in my opinion. <clears throat> okay, real quick on denim. I love needle felting onto denim. Denim is a great, it doesn't matter if it has a little bit of elastic in it, if it um, doesn't have any elastic in it, but you're going to want to experiment with your needles. <clears throat> Denim can hold the fiber. Uh, it, it, it will sit almost like right on top and you can really punch it down. But upcycled denim, mostly I'm thinking of like jean weight denim or like the shirt I'm wearing weight denim, but not the super paper thin denim, only because you want it to have a little more body. But denim is a great option, especially for something that's decorative or something that you're going to sew into something else whether it's functional, wearable, or design. <clears throat> and we've needle felted onto jean jackets. I don't have any of them anymore, but if needle felted onto jean jackets, that's really fun. I just think of, think remember the functionality. So like I wouldn't needle felt onto the rear pocket of my blue jeans because it's going to get embraided all the time and it's going to pill. So that's the one thing to think about. Very often when we're looking at denim, we might want to decorate an apron, which one of our fairies did once, needle felted on her apron, and wet felted the surface after that. But it's and something that's a work apron is going to get abraded a lot. So maybe a special apron that you're gonna hand wash or just wear for certain occasions. But a daily item, you're really gonna to wanna to felt it down all the, all the way, and then, meaning needle felt it all the way, and then consider giving the surface just a wet felt treatment so that you wanna rinse all the soap out so that you don't get any soap rings on your material. But denim is really a good option. And I'll just show you the back of that so you can see a lot of, a lot of wool does pass through, but it will anchor in between. Denim can just take it for sure. Okay, quick talk. Let's talk about canvas. And I brought two canvas things for you. I have just this little black canvas, and I have this is just like a piece of lightweight. It's not lightweight canvas, but it's not as hard as this. This, our, our bags at the shop are really a heavy weight. I don't know, it's a 10 ounce canvas or something like that. It's a pretty heavy weight canvas. And you can see that this one has a little more drape to it. The more coarse your canvas is, whether it's a canvas bag or stretched canvas over a frame, what you're gonna have is what I call the, the surface resistance to the needle felt. So just as we saw how easily the needle passes through, uh, I'm trying to poke this needle in go in, not go in, go in, not go in, not go in, go in, not go in. So what's happening is, and it may, it depends on where I was before, is the threads are big. What doesn't want to go in? The threads are big. They're coarse. They're, they want it. Look, I'm poking that needle in and it doesn't want to go in. So let's look at a few things like that so if you're bending your needles first of all and you really want to work with this fabric but your needles are bending just realize there's surface tension so what you've got to do is go to a finer needle is it going to take more time to get it in there well yeah but you won't break your needle if your needle's not going through you're not getting anywhere anyway so these are our canvas bags same needle doesn't want to go through it doesn't want to go through it doesn't want to go in there unless I've already hit a hole or I hit those little spot in between. So if you want to decorate a canvas bag, think about going finer. So here's a 42. Oh, in, 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 no problem. Go finer if you're having a difficult time getting into a piece of canvas. And just expect that it's going to take time, that what you're going to be doing is attaching fiber to the see how nice it goes into this one remember a second ago I couldn't get my needle in that's a 42 and hey look the thing about it is 
you're really putting fiber on the top anyway and the reason a 42 is a really great choice is because it's just going to put material on the surface you're just putting it on the surface but you might want to try a 40 triangle to get a little more compaction or a 38 triangle initially 38 triangle this is a 38 triangle it's just one let me double check it's just one more coarse than our green needle the 40 triangle and it doesn't want to go in as easily. So it may be the needles that you're using with the fabric. So on the this even this light flimsy little canvas that I have here, the only two needles that I would use are the 40 triangle and the 42 triangle. So the 40 triangle, maybe the 40 spiral. The um, 40 spiral pretty good pretty good 40 spiral 42 triangle 42 so I think 40 and 42 when your fiber when your fabric is more coarse more rigid more resistant rather than get a stronger needle and think about trying to drive it into that fabric choose a finer needle that'll be able to sneak through the weave and help interlock the fiber so before you jump to um, needle felting on a fabric like that with a multi needle tool test and get your needle size because what happens with a multi needle tool is you've got multiple needles now pushing on that fabric and you may get even more surface tension and you'll wonder why all your needles just bowed so before using a multi needle tool find the right size of needle and then test this will take a long time might be effective um, for doing multiple passes but let's try it on the living felt purse back okay but I'll tell you what will happen as soon as I put too much fiber on there is I'm gonna start to bow those needles and potentially break them so if you're bowing or bending needles go finer or choose a different fabric maybe <laughs> choose a different fabric so that's kind of how we think about and this, there's so many ways to think about these things how are you going to be displaying or using your picture is it going to display do you need it to hang on its own does it need to have are you felting it hundred percent are you needle felting it hundred percent are you wet felting it hundred percent these are the types of questions we have when you call us and want to know anything but especially what fabric what fabric should I use for my needle felting okay is there anything I didn't answer that I should answer yep we've got one question Miss I need uh, a drink absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Maria asks would the type of wool make a difference as well such as using coarser or finer wool for coarser or finer fabric it, it's also going it's always going to contribute of course you know you want that that perfect marriage for whatever you're doing um, usually when people call us and tell us what project they're working on then we're going to suggest the fiber but overall today we've really been talking about needle felting as opposed to wet felting and we're going to try and steer you towards a fiber that is really needle felting friendly to getting the kind of finish that you want so um, if you're needle felting a very fine fiber like a fine merino top and you want to needle felt it into this canvas bag I think you're not going to see a real happy marriage you're going to see that the fiber wants to sit on top you need a fiber that wants to felt to um, that will help you just create a really nice foundation with needle felting so we're going to steer you towards something like our MC1 batting which is short crimpy a nice medium fine micron which is going to give you a non fuzzy surface so yes those those are going to have a play but when you're needle felting and if you're hundred percent needle felting then we're going to drive you towards a fully a, a fiber that really is supported or will perform well just for needle felting if you're going to be wet felting your piece well then the world's your oyster because you can needle felt it just to hold it into place and then wet felt the whole thing and so you can choose the really fine fibers but that's only on something that's going to be wet felted so this question has come up a few times and that is can you wet felt the wool felt so what would happen if you wet felt the wool felt I have thrown this wool felt that we carry and this is a cut piece of it into the washing machine and seen at least 10 percent shrinkage so before you go doing that on a, on a great big piece test it and make sure that the fibers you put on top 
and the base fabric are going to shrink well together. Just make a test piece. It doesn't have to be overly designed, but you want to put as much wool on there as you would in your final piece and then wet felt those together. So this won't really felt anymore, but it will full more. And by fulling, we mean shrinking. By shrinking, we mean those fibers will get closer together. It's already felt, but I, I don't, I wouldn't usually use this for a wet felting project. I wouldn't. I would use a pre-felt and drop it in there as a base layer, one of those pre-felts. Okay. Any other questions before we sign out for today? Yes. For, for wearables like t-shirts and sweatshirts, mm. is the most long-lasting method always going to be to needle felt on, um, on like a felt sheet and then use a fusible backing to adhere it on? Okay, so the question is, what if you want to basically decorate a t-shirt or a sweatshirt? So <clears throat> t-shirts first. I would probably never needle felt onto a t-shirt. I would expect it not to stick well, not to bind well, um, and to really impact the t-shirt, but maybe that's just my t-shirt. So if you're going to needle felt onto a t-shirt, choose one of those less comfortable, heavier weight t-shirts that have a little more beef to them. Obviously pre-wash it, needle felt the heck out of it, and then wet felt it. Um, and then hand wash it. So I don't really think of adding an applique to a t-shirt. It usually is going to add some kind of weight and that's going to create bag and sag. So it doesn't, it's not the first thing that comes to my mind. I'm not saying it's impossible. And then a sweatshirt definitely bring me back to the 80s and 90s now. Where we, <laughs> yeah, it's laughing. Oh yeah, we decorated our sweatshirts or what, whatever, right? Um, definitely bringing me back. So you might consider, rather than putting it on a felt sheet, you might consider making that single subject even just the single subject, where's my llama, um, by itself even, and then, um, and then putting this adhesive back on it. It's an idea. You might just have yourself a little material to cut away just so you don't have too much bulk. When you cut this felt and you go to put it on something, you're going to see the perimeter. And could we grab the denim jacket super fast? This, we're just going to bring in the denim jacket where we did basically what you're asking about the, the sweatshirt. I probably, I wouldn't needle felt onto the sweatshirt. I would try and get as thin a fabric as I could get away with, maybe even linen. If you were to needle felt onto linen and then cut that subject out and then applique it onto your t-shirt, then you're just going to have almost wool on the, sweats the sweatshirt. I, I said t-shirt, but I meant sweatshirt. Um, you're almost just going to have your wool felt design on that sweatshirt or jacket with very little fabric in between to create bulk. Thank you, Anne. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is, this is our no problema, just basically like an applique on the back of this jacket. And we were just trying to show examples of things you could do with your no problema other than turn them into an ornament. And what you can see is that it really sits right on top. Does that show? Can you see that there is a, let me go overhead so you can see real fast. You can see that it's there. You can see it. Now maybe if you were to trim that with yarn or something or glue, but it's really, you can see that it's sitting right on there. And that's why I would say I would get that base fabric just about as thin as you can. To maybe try that idea with linen. Just leave yourself enough room on the linen so that you can cut it down to exactly fit your subject and then applique it on. Or you could have fun with it. And I didn't bring an example. Oh, but this is probably the closest ex example. This little guy, this little heart, is needle felted onto the wool felt and then appliqued. Is it glue? Do we glue? I think we use the same adhes adhesion. We didn't glue. No, oh, he's sewn on. Huh. I was going to say, if you leave the felt exposed around the, the rim there, leave the felt exposed around the rim, that can be part of the design element, and then attach it that way. You know, use the trim. It could be a, a complementary color or an opposite color if you want, but then we, we hand stitched it on. And that way, if the material can handle being sewn, that's gonna give you one of the best binds. So you could put an adhesive backing on and iron it into place initially so you have a really good adhesion, but then go around and hand stitch, and if you're if your thread is the same color as the felt, you won't even see it. And then, of course, like if you wanted to hide this, well, then I would tell you to, you know, if you want to hide that, then one of the things you could do is you could sew a patch in or iron on a patch inside, or you can give it a, 
lining, you know, just sew in a lining. And we'll look at, I'm going to do a wet felting class, probably in the school where, um, or somewhere, where I show you how to add a lining to a felt, a felted bag. That's one of the things I want to work on. So, any final questions before we go? One more. <laughs> and, says, and thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I hope this is helpful. I hope it's been, been somewhat helpful. It's definitely a very common question for us. What do you got? A few of our felting friends want to know, what is stabilizer and can it be washed? Oh, stabilizer. Okay, so, you know, we use stabilizer in a couple of videos, and I'm trying to think right now where we used them. I'm going to think about that, and, you know, we'll do a project. We'll do something together where we then put that stabilizer on the back. But a stabilizer is usually, we might call it a fusible web. Stabilizer can be sewn in or can be an ad adhesive, one side with an adhesive. And you know where you're going to see it is on our mounting and hanging video that I mentioned already. We put stabilizer on the back of some of our pictures. So a stabilizer can be lightweight, medium weight, heavyweight, or even like an ultra heavyweight. You might see it under a brand name of like Pellon is one that I'm really familiar with. You'll see it at the fabric store. And what happens is when you sew something like this, it's basically like a paper backing that you put on after you're finished with this piece and then the fabric doesn't feel so thin. So the thicker it is, the more rigid that fabric is. Um, so very often you might put it on the pocket of a, of a bag or something so that that pocket isn't just loosey-goosey, it has just a little more body to it. And it's just a basically, whether it's fusible or sew on, is a paper backing for fabric to give that fabric more integrity short answer. Wiki that. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Cool, 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 cool. Well, I, I hope it's helpful. I really look forward to your feedback and some even probably contradicting opinions. I'm totally open to that, um, to there being some people are just going to love what they love. You know, I just, the thing I want to offer is when you make a functional item, this is one of our known for the holiday pillowcases that we made last year. You can see this on our YouTube channel. Um, there's a pattern you can get for it. And then there is a, a, a not so great video where I show you how to do the little um, pillow zipper. But the one thing I want to say is needle felt your, anything that's going to be a functional, functional item, needle felt it super duper 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 well. Um, you don't needle felt over the hoop and you don't needle felt into the pillow. You want to needle felt on your foam because if it gets leaned against or whatever, it's going to pill. And you might need to go back and just treat it again and needle felt it a little bit more if it gets roughed up. But don't be shy about needle felting pictures to also be functional items because they're super fun. All right, I've talked long enough, but Anne is ready with some prizes and some names because this is the time we like to give away prizes. So oh, yeah. Anne has names in the hat of everyone who's been participating. And before we draw names, don't worry if you don't get called. You can comment down below, tell us your favorite takeaway, or ask us another question, and you'll be entered to win next week. What are you giving away, Anne? All righty, we are giving away a one of the burlap bags, some linen fabric, and a felt sheet. Mm -hmm. Nice fun. spread there. Plus, you're going to get an MC1 sampler. Oh, fun. So, yeah, you'll get a lot of the fibers we've already been showing you today and then three different fabrics that you can needle felt onto and play with. And if you don't know what needles to get, go with a variety pack and a 42 triangle pack if you're, if you're just not sure. But you also need foam or something if you don't already have it. Okay, let's draw some names. We're going to give away a couple prizes right now. Okay. Just one? <laughs> uh, yep, I've just got one. Okay. <laughs> All righty. First winner is Judy Kobias. All right. Judy and I have Chris Nelson. So congratulations, Chris and Judy, and thank you everyone for participating. Please, if you enjoyed today, we hope you consider giving us a thumbs up on the video. You can hang out with us on Facebook. This is where we are all week, and you get to just get to know all these beautiful BFF people. If you make something, tag us on Instagram, and you can shop with us. Of course, uh, the stuff we shared with you today is available in our shop, and we hope you to see you in the Facebook group, and we hope to see you next week, too. We're going to play some more together. Next week, we're going to needle felt a picture. So come back, subscribe, hit the bell, so you get notified every time we upload a new video and go live. Right? Right. In the meantime, be super duper good to yourself. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.